Hello. Today, all Education International staff will have transitioned into teleworking arrangements to give our health systems a chance to focus on those who need their assistance most. And I am just about to join them, but I wanted to record a message to you, our members, our students, our friends and our allies. Today, teacher and education support personnel union leaders the world over are coming together in myriad ways to find collective solutions to address the needs of their students, colleagues and communities despite enormous challenges and deteriorating situations. Today, our members are demanding that all children and young people, as far as possible, have access to inclusive quality and well-supported learning and education, even when school buildings are closed, as is in the case in many countries right now, where governments are making difficult decisions to contain the spread of a global pandemic. At this very moment, Teachers and education support personnel are supporting parents and communities in making sure children feel as safe as possible and that they understand how they can protect themselves and others with information and knowledge, not fear and prejudice. I'm so impressed with the stories I've heard of how education professionals are adapting and finding new solutions as to how education can be kept going. Recorded lessons, podcasts, shared lesson plans. The profession is demonstrating their dedication, their creativity, and their willingness to share through establishing online hubs that are open to all. Researchers are working around the clock towards a vaccine. I am proud to see member organizations across 174 countries working tirelessly to support their members and making sure that they have the necessary tools and maintain their terms and conditions of employment. I am heartened by the willingness to share good examples of response from those countries that were at the tip of the coronavirus spear so that others can learn about containment and mitigation. At this unprecedented moment, Education International will increase our work to support you, our members, across sectors, categories, nations, regions, and linguistic groups. We have already shared our policies and principles with the world's ministers of education, and we will continue to advocate and organize so that educators' voices are informing education decisions. We are also monitoring, collecting, and sharing your stories and your good practices across all of our platforms, so please keep them coming. And we are focused and shining a light on the would-be disaster profiteers and data miners who want nothing more than early brand loyalty and access to our students' data. Likewise, we are calling out autocratic regimes who weaken democracy in the name of safety and order. We have joined with other global union federations to impress upon employers and governments the critical importance of proactive steps with regards to sick pay, parental leave, increased public investment, and protecting core labor rights. We are especially cognizant and concerned about the impact of the virus on the most marginalized and vulnerable the students who depend on school feeding programs to get their only meal of the day, the casualized and contingent faculty member who is already living a precarious existence, the parents who must choose between medical treatment and food, the ethnic minorities and refugees who are stereotyped and bullied instead of welcomed and supported, female students who already are facing extreme gender discrimination. Today, like yesterday, and tomorrow, we find at our core our human and trade union values. In our veins, the education unions and the educators who are our lifeblood. In our minds, the memory of history and the hope of a more just future. In our DNA, a stubborn and resilient solidarity that urges us out of isolationist, individualistic responses and into collective action. Colleagues, we stand on the shoulders of giants who have sacrificed so much for us. The first integrated school, women's suffrage, the first collectively bargained agreement, the first merger of global education union federations into one education international. Today, we feel the responsibility to them, many of whom are now in the later stages of life and particularly vulnerable to the coronavirus. Colleagues, 
this is an unpredictable and difficult time. And that requires an organized resistance and educational persistence. Yet today, Education International, our member organizations, and the world's educators are committed to getting through this together. Because after all, it's who we are.